welcome. For those of you who are new here, my name is Kathleen. I am a wife, a mom to two beautiful girls, and a business owner. In today's vlog, I am um, collaborating with Laverne. Um, she will be introducing herself and our guest for today. Laverne? Hi everyone, as Kay has mentioned, my name is Laverne, known as Levi. I am the owner and founder of Pursuit Consulting based in South Africa. And it's my privilege to introduce Tebako, who um, is in the industry as well. And she's also a proud owner of her own salon, uh, which is based in Pretoria. I'm going to give her the platform because she is best at explaining who she is and where she's from and where she is at now. Take it away. Hi, everyone. My name is Tebako Toka, and I'm a single mom. And a business owner. I'm the owner of Baby Health Aesthetics, which, as Laverne said, is based in Pretoria. I've been in the industry for about 13 years now, and I started in mainstream uh, beauty. So I used to work at different uh, franchise salons doing almost every treatment you can imagine. And during that period, I, I think I discovered my passion, which was skincare and not just skincare, result driven skincare. And I started doing that um, 2015. That's when I started Fabu Health Aesthetics. And it's been quite a long, stressful, and rewarding journey. And um, I'm really enjoying every moment of this industry even though sometimes it does have its challenges, but uh, I think the challenges are actually what makes us stronger as, mm -hmm. as therapists and as business owners at the end of the day. Amazing. Awesome. Thank you. Um, All right. So how, did you, how did you go about getting into this business? Was it because something you studied or something you had a passion for? So yes, it's something that I studied, but what made me study somatology was um, a brief history. I was in the South African military, in the Defense Force. And during my time there, I, I experienced a lot of sunburn and, and sand damage because of the nature of the industry. We're always outdoors, we're always in the sun. And, and after my, my military training, um, my, my skin was really severely damaged mm. and I tried over the counter products, but I did not see the kind of results that I, that I wanted to see. So I just went to the internet and I started searching for products mm. and treatments that would help repair and heal my skin. Mm. And through that, it sort of became a bit of an obsession and an interest. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to do something that would help, people like me uh, with their skins. And I thought um, maybe dermatology, but then nah, it was not an option then. So mm -hmm. I discovered somatology then and I enrolled and I've never looked back. Wow. Nice background. I know. You would never say. Amazing. How did you go about choosing the name for your business? Uh, so... Yeah, it, it started as Extreme Beauty. That was the first name. Yeah, so that was the first name that I said. Um, and, and after Extreme Beauty, I was like, no, well, I don't really want to focus on the beauty mm. part of the business only. I also wanted to incorporate wellness mm. into it because I remember some time ago, also in 2015, I did a few corporate wellness uh, programs mm. and and I just wanted to expand and I still have that uh, wish to one day expand my business to have the entire health scope into it have medical doctors under me have wellness coaches mm. have nutrition so so I wanted an overall health related um, business so I I opted for something fabulous something healthy yeah. and there's like okay well let's just go with fabby health uh, while we add it interesting. Very interesting. short and sweet mm. i must yeah. say when i when i when i first saw your um your logo i actually thought you were like a full-on wellness center yeah and then when i yeah. obviously you know heard your your podcast i was like hey this girl's actually a 
a therapist like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we're going there. We're going full on wellness center mm-hmm. with everything. Good. That's the goal. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. That's good. Um, so Sammy, how did you go about registering your, your, your business? Did you find it as an easy journey or was it something difficult? It was not really difficult. Eh? Um, I, mostly I did everything online. Um, I went to CIPC, mm-hmm. I wish then was Cipro, mm-hmm. and, and I registered, I registered a few names and um, my main name, which was Fabi Health, was approved. Mm-hmm. And from there, I think, because when you start a business, you always think that the, the registration and compliance is, is a bit of a challenge. But mm-hmm. once you actually get to do it you see that it's actually not as difficult as we we think it is so Mm. but the sooner you start then the better because starting at a later stage then complicates everything and they've been asking you so we want what you've been doing for the past two years because I'm still on other compliance issues right now that I wish I had started sooner Mm. then it would have been so the, the registration initially was not so difficult and then I got my tax and I got my bank account sorted, got my swiping machine. So that was actually quite easy for me to, to put together. I didn't have any challenges with that. Mm. Nice. Okay. Um, I, think, I think you've answered this one already, but I was going to say, what do you like most about your industry? I think you, you've touched a lot of, uh, on different points about what you like about the industry. So I don't know if you want to go and just sum it up. Yeah, no, you, you can't really be comfortable mm. in this industry. There's always a new challenge. Mm. You always have to be on your toes. Things are changing and they are changing very, very fast. I mean, let's talk about this COVID-19 situation mm. where mm. no one really knows what's going to happen, but there is going to be a change. Mm. And we will all be ready to step up and just go with it mm. and make mm. sure that while we are at it, we do our best in um, well, welcoming this new change and helping our clients adjust to this normal, uh, the new norm, mm. as they call it. Mm. So, yeah, yeah I, love, I love that there's always something to look forward to. There's always a change and you can never do one thing repeatedly. So there's never a boring moment that mm. you'll say, I'm bored. I feel like I'm stuck. Mm-hmm. That's, that's mm-hmm. just the choice because there's just so much to do in this industry. It's, it's growing, it's full of new possibilities mm-hmm. and new growth opportunities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, like, uh, even though I'm a therapist and I own my own consulting company, I think we, we tend to learn a lot from you guys that are on the front line, actually having your, uh, you own a salon, you're dealing with the clients, you know, we, we are basically your backbone. So how would you, what have you done or how have you gone about restyling your business to make sure that your employees and your clients feel safe? Or how do you actually get them to, to say, uh, you guys are welcome back. We're ready, we're ready to, to start with you. So in our industry right now, especially with the beauty industry, we can't really fully open to do uh, most treatments. Mostly we can open for retail and consultations just to help clients on the right products to use. So what I've been seeing a lot is the whole virtual uh, trends that are happening. And and everyone's like, hi, do you guys do virtual consultations? Can I please speak to a therapist about my skin? And honestly, I've been having challenges mm. with that because because I, I thrive on, on human connection. I'm, I'm a therapist. I, I want to see you. I want to, to engage with you because, I mean, for me, real human connection builds a long-term relationship. Yeah. So that's, that's something that I've been doing for the past 13 years, seeing people, getting to know them, and, and getting to, to, to see their, their, their personalities and how I can actually help this person. And now I must send them an email to say, consent to this before I even know you. And then now let's just talk <laughs> via Zoom or via or whatever. More I admin. Mean. Yeah, and, and, and it's so much admin, but I don't feel that human connection. You know, I don't actually get to see the person that I'm, that I'm speaking with. And that's been a bit of a challenge. 
but I'm seeing so many practices, even doctors um, catching up and, and doing with, and, and I was speaking to my rep mm -hmm. and I said, I feel, I feel stuck. Mm -hmm. And I feel that my inability to adjust and change will delay me because actually clients are asking for it. They're asking, yeah. how do you guys do virtual consultations? Hi, my skin is breaking out. I want you to have a look at it and suggest if I should change my products. So if I'm not comfortable to go into that space, I will lose clients. So whether mm. we like it or not, mm. the industry is shifting. Yeah. People are shifting and we have to shift. Mm. We have to. Yeah, it's just I think, I think that. I think internationally it, it, it's been it's been pending and I and I think this whole thing with COVID nineteen has kinda pushed us yes. in this direction. Um, yes. because if you look at a bigger you know, a bigger picture and you look at your international brands, they've already started doing all of this. Yeah. Um, and I think it's it's really for us to change our mindsets. Um, because I also still think like a therapist. <laughs> I still <laughs> think practical. I still want to have that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, meetings with my clients. I hate Zoom. I hate WhatsApp. You know, I don't like it. But I, yeah. I have to mentally prepare myself mm. to say this is going to be the new norm. You know. So you you you've you've touched on you know that you've had to go on online. So how have you managed to actually retain your clients during lockdown? What have you done yourself in your practice? So, yeah. like, um, for me, online right now is the backbone of my business. I have to maintain a presence online. So posting as often as I can on stories, promoting products. I've, I'm actually more active now. I'm more active on my online shop than I've ever been. So, so what measures have you actually taken to retain your clients during lockdown? Look, you, I know you're full of diversity, you're full of innovation. You, 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 you seem to adjust very well to new things. So just take us through the steps that you've now, you know, implemented to, to retain your clients. So I've, I've been on, on social media more often than, than I used to be. Um, so I'm posting a lot on stories just to keep up with the trends. Like recently, last week, I had to bring IV drips because that's mm. a medical procedure. And I had to say, I need people to walk in and not just buy online, but come into the physical store and do something. And while they're there for an IV drip, then the therapist in me kicks in and I say, oh, but I see your skin is also dry, much as you want to you know, let's <laughs> oh, <no>. get <laughs> you to do one, two, three, you know, let's sell you some more stuff. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. much as virtual, it's, it's, it's really taken um, a different direction. My online hits, I'm starting to see almost 50 people going to my website, mm -hmm. which before mm -hmm. I did not really pay attention to it because I was so concentrated on how many people come in the physical store for treatment. Mm -hmm. But then now I want them to go to the virtual store mm -hmm. for sales and also to keep updated with what's happening. Mm -hmm. So I have to promote the website a lot more and automations are a lifesaver, you know, yeah. because people are there. And if something pops up and says, hi, my name is Taboha. I see you on my shop. Uh, how best can I help you? And that, yeah. and the person says, oh, hi, I've got dry skin. And you immediately respond. They feel as if they're with you. So I've, I'm really learning how to do this whole automation and, and, and just the virtual <laughs> consultations of running a business from my hands mm, without yeah. actually seeing people. And, and we've been learning a lot since, since this lockdown started. I'm loving it. I think it's great. And I'm looking forward to my therapist coming back and also learning that when there are no clients at the physical store, you can actually go to the computer or to the phone and see what other clients are doing yeah. here online and send reminders or chat with clients. One hundred percent. And going into that, because obviously you've got you've got staff to think about, you've got to think about their safety. So have you now gone and tweaked your your service offers, your your um 
you're priceless have you have you were, were you sorry were you um have you now been put into a position where you've got to remove things or you've got to add things that you're going more digital, more device? Have you done that? Or is it something that you're not looking in? Because look, you've just mentioned that you, you've included the drips, which, you know, is kind of a good thing because you are creating that whole wellness um, mm -hmm. platform. Yes. Well, in terms of price adjust, adjustments, um, unfortunately, there is going to be a need for pricing adjustments. One, um, our Ryan is not really doing well right now. Yeah. So most of our suppliers have increased their, their prices. Shipping costs are extremely high at this point in time. So to get mm. products into the, into the country is expensive. Three, everything has to be disposable moving forward. Yes. Yeah. So you have to take in all the sanitizers, the disinfectants, the disposable linen, just everything that goes into making a treatment possible is now a bit more expensive. Yes, definitely. Mm. So that needs to be factored into the costs, mm. unfortunately. Yeah. Otherwise, so you, you've really, we'll run you've really gone to, yeah, you've really gone to like, re-looking at your costings, re-looking at how your therapists are actually going to be doing their protocols. So it, it, it is quite a lot of work for you as, as an owner before level one or level, level two kicks yeah, in. Yeah, you need to buy screens, you need to buy masks, you need to buy more gloves. Um, it, it's just a lot to do one treatment. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. client needs to understand that the prices have to be adjusted for their safety mm -hmm. and for their mm -hmm. health. Yeah. 100 Okay, you got any other questions? I took over. <laughs> no, no. I just started okay. like, I, 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 I want to hear more information. What kind of products do you use? What, what, are your, what products do you use in your, in, your, in your clinic? So I use one local brand called Lamel. Yes. Okay. Um, it's a facial product. And then I use Miso Aesthetic and Dermaceutics. Okay. Um, which one is a, well both of them actually are French um, products so those are the two that I import into the country right. so, so you and yourself you still, um, you still actually do the treatments yourself am I right I'm very hands on I'm very okay. hands on I prefer doing most consultations myself getting to meet the client, understand their budgets, understand their needs, understand their personality so that I can assign them better to a therapist that would help them. Because mm -hmm. I've, I've learned that um, sometimes, and recently seen that I've been alone most of the time uh, with just my admin at the, at the clinic. I haven't met some clients because sometimes it just gets too busy for you to meet everyone and consult with everyone, much as it's something yeah. that I prefer. And I'd say, but who's this lady that's coming in now uh, to, to get products at 12? Then um, my admin would say, it's so-and-so. Um, well, she's a bit cold. She doesn't really talk much and all that. And then she walks in, we have a chat. And 30 minutes later, we're still there having tea, talking and laughing. <laughs> and then they say that we've never seen her like that before. Mm -hmm. wow. And sometimes it, it's how you relate to yeah, people. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I always say that often we lose clients not because of a service, but because we could not relate with that person so mm -hmm. once i know this is the type of client is it a client that i should keep mm -hmm. is it a client that i can give to a quieter therapist mm -hmm. or is it a client that i will give to someone who's very really powerful and outspoken so mm -hmm. i just also need to match my clients personalities with my therapist personalities because i've seen that it really really works but clients also have a tendency of wanting to cling to the owner, yeah. which is another yeah. challenge. Yeah. You know, yeah. they yeah. think that, no, 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 I, so are you going to do my treatment next mm -hmm. time? Mm -hmm. And you say, no, yeah. but I know someone who's very good. Mm -hmm. uh, she'll take mm -hmm. over. I'll tell her everything mm -hmm. that she needs to do. And she'll give me feedback. You'll also give me feedback. So both of you will keep communicating with me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. we, we, it's, it's our faces after all and yeah, you just okay. want one person to touch you every time and obviously you want to be treated by the best mm. yeah yeah that's it's true what what does a successful business look like for you 
a success of a business is yes you cannot be anxious especially when you me but it's it's knowing that you are not anxious about running at a loss mm. yes as long as you can break even and still have a peace of mind mm. at the end of the day because sometimes business can drive you a little crazy itself mm. it's just like mm-hmm. each other, like you lose your mind over it mm. but for me knowing that every month i can break even pay my suppliers pay my salaries pay myself and still remain sane mm. that for me is is a good success story for a month yeah, yeah that's that's brilliant yeah, yeah. I, I find a lot of people um, struggle. They're able to pay suppliers and able to pay um, their, their staff but, and able to pay, you know, pay different things. But when it comes to paying yourself, a lot of people actually struggle to, to get to a point where you're actually paying yourself, you know, because it's, it's about your staff. Obviously, you need to look after your staff. You pay your rent, you get your products and all of that. So I think when you can actually get to a point where you're paying yourself, then, you know, you're doing something right. I, I spoke to one business developer, um, uh, I think late last year, and uh, we were talking about the pay slips and pay salaries, and, and he asked me, so um, how much do you earn? Mm. How much do you pay yourself? Mm. And I said, well, it depends on the month. Mm. And he says, well, do you understand that you are a CEO mm. of your company? And all CEOs have a salary. Mm. Mm. And that you should always pay yourself no, you first. Mm. Yeah. And I, and, I, and I said, but I thought in business, make sure that everyone is happy and pay yourself last. And he said, no. You have a salary, you set it aside and you say, I earn this amount every month. Mm. And you make sure that you pay yourself and you pay everyone else. That's how you run a business. You have to pay yourself from day one. Mm. For two years, I did not have a salary. Mm. Sure. When I started the business. Mm. And I wish I had paid myself sooner. But, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, I've spoken to a lot of different people who actually own uh, clinics or spas um, or even any other kind of business. And a lot of people do not pay themselves any kind of salary because you're thinking about, I need to pay my staff, I need to pay my suppliers, I need to pay my rent, I need to put Pedro in the car so I can go find more clients, you know, a lot of different things. So people, you end up not looking after yourself and you are the, like you said, the CEO of your company. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. yeah. I and must say, when, when I, I think when I opened my business, I think where my biggest thing for me was to make sure that my HR department and my payroll was like were well organized and that was the first thing is that even if i gradually you know gave myself an increase the yes okay i paid myself half my salary that i would get paid from somebody but i still when i you know i paid my suppliers or when i paid my my pa when i was creating her payslip i still created my payslip your payslip you know? yeah the mindset and i'm thinking oh do i really have to pay myself i'm going to pay a supplier tomorrow but i just thought to myself as stupid as it sounds or silly as it sounds you have to do it yeah. because yeah. you've got to get into that motion yeah and you, you or no one actually works for free yeah so why should you make yourself work for free one hundred percent. No, so I, I, I had to learn to to detach my personal brand mm. from the business brand, mm. and and I always walk in and I, and I'd say to to my admin when she says something, and I said, no, but I came to work. I'm not Fab You Help, mm. you know. <laughs> yeah, and and, and, and yeah. I had to drill that that yeah. I am not Fab You Help. Yeah. Yeah. I work here. Mm. like everyone else mm. and I should be held accountable and and that's when I learned the power of accountability that when you make decisions make decisions in front of everyone so that yeah. tomorrow you can be held accountable mm. for saying yeah. that but you said that this is going to happen and when you fail don't say what is my business I can do whatever I want yeah. no yeah. it's part mm. of a team and when there's yeah. Yes. 
you got to really practice what that. you preach. Exactly. You got to practice what you preach. You you really have to do that. Okay, do you have any more questions? Yes, one, one more. What would you say is the most challenging about your business? So I know in the beginning you said that you are a um, a single mom, right? Yeah. So what is the most challenging part of your business? In, 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 in answering that, I, want, I would like to hear, because you're a single mom, what, what is most challenging about, about being a single mom and in business, you know, and who do you look to for support, you know? So, so number one is it's just general uncertainties yes. about, about the future mm. of business, of you being to provide for yourself and your child, yes. number one, mm-hmm. like if I don't do this, what kind of life is my child going to have? To the challenge of that 50-50 balance of being a mother, being present, and also being a successful businesswoman and being present Mm -hmm. in that sphere as well. Um, So immediately after giving birth, that's also when I realized that that, uh, a lot of insurances and compliances that I needed to do before so that I could have enough time Mm. to bond with my child. Mm. But then because I did not have that in place, I had to rush back Mm. to the business to work because if I'm not there, Mm. no one is going to run that business for me. Mm. That's Mm. also the challenges of having a small business that you do everything. Mm. So I, I felt that I did not have enough time to, to be a mom a new mom and to bond with my very little baby mm. and and the guilt always remains with you that that i should be home right now but look i'm here and is it really worth it mm. at the end of the day that's that's like one big challenge that you need to get through it because you're saying i'm doing this so that both of us can have a better future mm. Mm. So much as the immediate results from it might not be so pleasant but you look forward to the rewards that you will get and reap from this mm. challenge. So yes, mm. it's, you go through a lot of uncertainties and doubts to say, is this really worth it? Should I do this? Should I not do it? But always trust your gut. Mm. Always trust your gut. And also um, the financial management. Mm. I mean, before this lockdown, we all for 12, 21 days. I think we'll survive 21 days, yeah. guys. Let's just yeah. go home. Maybe we also needed those 21 days to just relax mm. and wait. I think everyone needed, yeah, everyone needed that first 21 days mm. to just let go and say, this is beyond my control. Mm. But after 21 days, there was another 21 days added. And that's where the anxiety started kicking in. Yeah. Okay, how am I going to survive? Mm-hmm. How am I going to make it? And now I'm starting to see a lot of people actually opting to close down business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's costing you. Much as it's closed, you need to pay rent. You need to consider that there are staff members who did not choose yeah. to be in the situation that they're in and they also need some sort of money. Yeah. And they also understand that the business is not making money. So mm-hmm. they appreciate the little that mm-hmm. that you can do for them. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that the financial uncertainties and the financial management um, is actually very, very important. And it still remains a challenge, especially for small business, the salon business. Mm-hmm. I spoke to my banker recently with... Um, relief funds Mm. and she said to me it's very hard for your industry for the bank to actually give you a secured loan because we don't know what's going to happen in the near future especially for the beauty industry Mm. it's very sad it's very sad and and also disappointing in a way because i mean people had businesses for years you know even if you haven't had it for years you put a lot of effort time and money into it even if you've only had it for a month or a year or, or 10 years that's still your 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 brainchild your baby your money your energy so for someone to say that you know we're not sure where what, what lies ahead for you so we, we, we can't we can't help you right now i mean it, 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 it's, yeah i think it's a you know it, it's very challenging hmm. but i also think this is i think we're at a point now 
whether this situation can make or break your your company. And I think mm. this is starts. This is where you got to start asking yourself: Do you think like an owner, or do you think like an entrepreneur? Because if you yeah. think like an entrepreneur, you're going to find ways to make sure that your business does not close its doors. Mm. Yeah. You're going to have to take, you know, risks that you thought you'd never actually take. And you're going to actually have to partner with people that you thought you'd never partner with. Mm. I don't think there's one thing that I think this industry can take, you know, um, they, they, they don't have to take for granted is the fact that they now partnering up. I don't think I've ever seen our industry so close mm-hmm. because Very suppliers true. are stepping in, yeah. Uh, yeah. business partners are stepping in, mm-hmm. salons are, are collaborating, yeah. consulting agencies are collaborating mm-hmm. because you can see that people are at a point where they are shutting doors and they don't have income. Yeah. So yeah. I think this is my, going to go into my next question uh, for you, Tebuko, is that where do you see the sector going? Because where it's not going to end, as you say, we went from 21 days to another 21 days and guys, it's not going to go away. We're going to be dealing with this for the next year or two until they actually find a vaccine and they still need to do the testings. So where do you see the industry? And I speak from South Africa perspective. Yeah. For me, Levan, the beauty industry is not going to die anytime soon. That's just one industry that no matter how you shut it down, people will find ways. Yes. Much as they're finding ways to buy alcohol and other things, they will find ways <laughs> to do their nails. They'll find ways to do their hair. They'll find ways to get what they want. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember level four already, uh, I had so many clients who were frustrated, who said, I, how do, is there something that I should be doing at home? Mm-hmm. Is there a home care mm-hmm. kit that I can buy that's as close enough to actually feeling like I did an actual treatment mm-hmm. that I can do? Uh, some called me and said, do you do house calls? Can you come to my house? Can I come to your house? Anything. Mm-hmm. And that actually birthed a lot of... Um, entrepreneurs in the process because mm-hmm. I know of, of so many ladies who are nail technicians who since lockdown have said that they've almost doubled their salaries mm. Wow! from clients mm. and one lady said you know what I've always wanted to do mobiles or I've always wanted to work from home but I never thought that clients would come but I've built mm. such a good brand for myself that most clients who called me and said, do you have um, something that I can use to do my nails? And she says, well, you can come to my house. Mm. And she says, you know what? All of them came and all of them referred someone. Sure. Because that was the only form of income that I had. Mm. So I'm seeing that more therapists will actually see that instead of working for someone, if you are reputable and you've been in the industry and you've got the right experience and you've got clientele, mm-hmm. chances are if you say, I'm right now, I'm working from home, your clients will come to you. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. another thing that I'm seeing is that the longer they close the formal industry, the black market continues to grow. 100%. And they will continue to grow. There's Mm -hmm. nothing you can do to stop it. So everywhere you go, people still have their hair done. They still have their nails done. And you ask, wait, did you do it? No, wait. Yeah. Yeah. My nails right now uh, (laughs) are shocking. Well, you own a nail salon and you don't even have nails. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and, and we can fight it all we want. At the end of the day, people need to put food on their tables. And um, I saw this post yesterday um, on Facebook and it was of a guy who was under some near a taxi rank and he had hair clippers and he had a board and he says 50 rand haircuts and all that. And they said, how illegal is this? Mm -hmm. And someone said that much as we all going through the same storm, our boats are very different. And you can swim or you can, or you have a bigger boat, but his boat is actually very small and he needs four clients a day mm. to just make that 200 rands to go home and support his family. Mm. If you tell that man that uh, COVID-19 kills, he knows that. Mm. 
Mm. He knows that we're going through a pandemic, but he's not going to wait for month end to get 350 or blame the yeah. government yeah. for starving. He's doing something about his situation. And I'm mm-hmm. starting to see more people actually acting out of desperation yeah. and doing whatever it takes just to get the industry back in. And the industry will continue because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think... I think definitely on that, it, it will definitely give back. And I think we also need to, you know, for you guys that are salon owners, I think even though there are no proper uh, regulations when it comes to health and safety for us that we can all refer to, I think we all know what, how to hand sanitize. I think we all know how to, you know, follow a good protocol when it comes to, you know, disinfecting and sterilize, sterilizing things. And I think it's, we just need to start setting the motion. And the more people start seeing that the industry is actually compliant, you know, then they, maybe they will just say, you guys need to open, you know, as, as soon as, as we guys want to. One thing that I've also noticed is that the unions are trying to also take advantage of the, the situations because, I mean, they have to set up the, the regulations as to what is needed to, to open and first of all is that you need to be registered and affiliated with a certain mm. union and then apply similar as before you get your URF, you must register with this and that and that and that and that. And then only then will they assist you. Mm. Similar with the unions is that in order for us to say now you are compliant okay. and you should or you can open, you need to have registered with a certain body. You need to have paid up up to this amount and you need to have one, two, three, four, five. And for much smaller businesses, it's going to be very hard for them to adhere to those rules. Yeah. I think for, for myself, it, it, it is a touch and go, you know, and I don't think that this is a, is a, is a way to get people to, you know, be, let their, their memberships be paid up before you can help them. You know, I, I don't think you should be in that position. Rather, give them the solutions now and deal with whatever needs to be dealt at a late stage. Because all well and good, you can get everybody to pay up their membership fees or whatever needs to be paid up now. But if you don't sort out what needs to be sorted out, they are not going to be able to even open their doors. You know? So I think it's yeah, it's, it's you scratch my back, I scratch your back. And I think right now, they shouldn't, no one should really be asking for the fact that we need your money first to go ahead and actually get this moved to a level that, you know, we want it to be moved to. It's the fact of this is the situation. This is what we need to do. Let's do it. And let's reassure that the industry can actually count on us when we go through things like this. Because right now, everybody is on risk mode. Everybody is trying to come up with these solutions because no one was prepared for it. Yeah. But I think that we all need to remember that we're on the same level of what, what do we do to go forward? And yes, they have a bigger voice than us. So use your frontline people to compile whatever they need to compile, submit it and get moved to the next level. And I think they're slowly doing that, but I hear what you're saying that, you know, there's, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. And I think this is where the industry will always come back. There will always be that rivalry, you know? (laughs) There will always be that uncertainty. But I I, I hear what you're saying. And I think right now we've just got to stand together and we've really got to say, open the doors yeah. so that we can actually register, be part of the unions, support the, the unions, support the body, the bodies at associations. And, you know, and now we know that the industry is moving because people have to be compliant. And also my advice is that um, it's important to, to know that it's okay to, to be in the situations that we in. And if you are struggling, it's not because you chose this is beyond yes. us. And we need to do what we have to in order to survive. Because there's one lady who said that um, she's been thinking of selling PPEs and sanitizers and all that to her clients. And she asked me, do you think that's a good idea? Because it's going to be seeming as if 
maybe I'm desperate. I'm just trying to do everything. And I said, but what if you are desperate? What's wrong with that? Because you mm. need to keep your business alive. Mm. So if you think that I'm desperate and I need to do this, do it. Do mm. it. You'd be surprised how many people or how many of your clients would actually buy from you or recommend your services to someone. So if you need to add on a vitamin supplements mm. or masks mm. or anything that would sell at this point in time, do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's for their best interest. Mm -hmm. It really yeah. is interest. Mm -hmm. I think, I think you, you, you really like, I must say with, with a lot of the inquiries that we get, you know, people are, a lot of people are going online. And the one, um, she's not even a doctor, she's an eye specialist. And she said, is it okay for me to sell supplements? And I said, yes, why not? You yes, know, why not? You, you, you still have an understanding. It all still falls in the 360 platform of one's wellness, you know, and safety. So, yes, go for it. If you want to sell it, if you have, given, have been given the rights to sell the product online, then do it. Nothing is stopping you. You're not dropping your level of service. You're mm -hmm. actually increasing your level of service because you see there's a need for your clients, not just from a, you know, checking their eyes and making sure that they can see, but you're also now investing into their daily well-being and making sure that their immune systems are actually strong. Yeah. Awesome. I think I think our Zoom uh, timing is going down. It's gonna it's <laughs> me a, a notice. <laughs> um, <laughs> a last question from my side is: um, What does beauty mean to you? And can you give us four beauty products that you can't live without? And for me, beauty is is just being comfortable in in your own skin. Is everyone there? Yes. Um, yes. You see, it's being comfortable in your own skin every time. Like, not just your face, being confident in who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. That, for me, is, is true beauty. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the products that I always, always, always make sure that I have, guys, number one, number <laughs> one, a cellulite cream. Like, I, 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 cannot, you know, I thought I thought you were gonna say sunscreen. <laughs> no, no, no. I I cannot live without cellulite cream. It's it's sort of like an addiction for me to like. I can I can stand anything, but I just don't want cellulite because I am prone to getting like my water retention is very bad. So if I don't exfoliate my thighs and I don't put it on, two weeks. And then you start seeing the dimples and dimple thighs on skinny people is like the most unattractive thing. <laughs> so number one is cellulite cream. Number two, definitely, definitely vitamin C serum. Okay. I love my vitamin C serums mm -hmm. and my feet. Mm -hmm. So a foot cream, mm -hmm. definitely a must have. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about it yesterday and I said, you know what, something for the lips, I'm not fussy. Mm -hmm. As long as my lips stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. and that's it. <laughs> and that's it. The cellulite makes me happy. Yeah. Blow, blown away. Blown away. I yes. need to take that like, one. I, I think I always cute. buy them. I buy them in threes or fours. I can never just buy one cellulite cream. I'm like, what's this new one? I've never used this one before. So... I've got a whole lot of tubes of cellulite, lotions, creams, yeah. tonics, yeah, yeah Q10. So, that's so just let's me. go back. So have you actually found something that really does work for your cellulite from a topical perspective? It doesn't really work for cellulite, but I feel much smoother after using, and yeah, I've well, always been using this. It's, it's that Dermalac lotion from yes. environ mm. yeah I, I i never run out of that so Amazing. for me it's the loofers and then the dermalac lotion oh, brilliant interesting yeah. no, but thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us i think um 
We actually need to do another interview with you. Go. Yes, go I was going to say, we need yes. to follow yeah. up one. Yeah. We, yeah, we definitely do. Um, so we'll hear after the 17th, I think it's on Wednesday. Yes. Yeah. Um, there's an advocate who's trying to appeal for, for the industry to open. And he will give the government 10 days to respond yeah. after the 17th. So I'm crossing my fingers for some good news. And I'm hoping everyone will be able to go back to work and okay. work on their business as well. Because okay. I really want to start marketing and saying, book now, come yeah. back, let's work. Yeah. So right yeah. now, all I can say is that um, this is the update. We can't wait to see you soon. And we hope everyone is okay. Yeah. You can just keep in touch and say hello at this point in time i think i think what we can also do because one of our things that we obviously you know we've got our reopening solutions is that we can actually come in video and see what what are you how are you actually dealing with your clients when they come in like a, a full on process because we want to do a full recording and i must say when i went to your clinic it is super clean you would think you're walking into a you know a top surgeon's uh practice because mm. everything is clean, everything is clear, there's no like, things are hiding, you, everything is visible to the eye, there's one person in reception, you know, her seating is separate, so you can yeah. see without, you know, I don't even know if you have changed anything yet, but just <laughs> me, me being oh, there, yeah, just being there, you know, I can already see that you, you've already started taking certain things into, into play, social distancing and everything. So it is something that we can actually look into to say that, you know, this is what salons are actually doing in South Africa. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think, it, I think it'll be nice to actually show people, because I think a lot of people, a lot of salons want to open and are ready to open, but also we might not understand the depth of what we actually need to do uh, to open. Yeah. And, and I think yeah. that's, that's where the problem lies. You know, we're all ready. We're all, we, we all want to open. But we also need someone to say, A, B, C, D. Yes, we all know we need to have sanitizer. We need to have this. But what do you do with that afterwards? What do I do? do I, where do I throw it? What do I do with it? So I think maybe, um, you know, if, when everyone has time, we can sit again and go through exactly the, you know, the steps that we need to follow in order to, yeah, actually, sure. you know, reopen. And, 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 yeah, just so that we can help everyone else. Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of other ladies who are in this industry who also need the information. And if we've got the information to share, why not? Mm -hmm. 100%. So. I agree. Thank you I think so it's much. Thank, Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. Thank Thank you so much for your time the on a Saturday. Yeah, no, thank <laughs> you so much. All right, then. Thank you, ladies. Bye. 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 Bye.